Welcome to the No Code UI design and development learning platform. I am excited to yeah, go through some different tutorials, courses, best practices, touch on all things relating to Flutterflow and launching products. My goal and hope would be that uh, from your learnings in this platform, you are able to produce better applications for your clients or your users, uh, depending on who you are, um, or your agencies, so that you can produce and launch beautifully designed applications with full functionality and in line with best practices in modern development. Now, I'm not a development expert, um, but I have an extensive experience with developing, designing and developing uh, design systems in Flutterflow and Figma and for, you know, clients as large as uh, Chili's. So I want to disperse that information to all of my users, to all the users of Flutterflow. Um, I want everybody to design gorgeous applications that function well, produce a intuitive and intelligent interface and user experience for the end users. Um, so if you want to dive with me, on to this uh, journey. This is sort of the first video and I wanna cover just the user interface of Flutterflow. Now you can go to the, the Flutterflow channel. There's a great intro, I think it's 30 minutes long on the breakdown of what Flutterflow is. I'm gonna make this extremely concise. Um, I'm using my no-code UI platform here and I'm just gonna go over some generic uh, and common design patterns within the platform itself. So. Um, here is where you, in this build or widget panel, you have the ability to drag and drop things onto the canvas, which we will be doing quite often. You also have the ability to detach this, or if you come over here to the widget tree, this is my favorite view. You can then you can then click uh, Command F on your keyboard, and you get this floating widget panel, right? Which is really cool because then you can add in a bunch of new things here. You can drag and drop. Um, when you drag and drop, we have an indicator of where you're dragging this, right? So in a row or a column between different elements. Um, this is another row, right? So you have an indicator of where you're going to drop these things. Super cool. Um, you also have your pages here, and we have. Uh, folders. We organize our pages and components within folders. Uh, there's not a rhyme or reason, but I'll probably go over some best practices in naming conventions and how to organize those things um, in one of these courses. So you can search things. You can also just search pages or just search components. Um, all folders are visible at that time, even empty ones, because uh, you could have components and pages within the same folder. So uh, when you're in this view, you can also view pages as a grid. So again, these are just nuances that maybe are not covered. You can also add folders here. You can also add a page, a component, or a flow. So you can do that from this little green button here or pressing Command-Shift-F. Okay, Command-Shift-F on a Mac. I don't know what it is on a Windows. I'm guessing Control-Shift-F. Um, but you can, you know, add these page templates. There's over 165 page templates. So far, I have designed all of them. I don't know if that will be the case when you guys actually see this, but um, they are designed in accordance with best practices within Flutterflow. Uh, for the most part, there may be a one or two old ones, but these are just pages that can help you build faster. Um, same thing with components. These are anywhere from a card you know, to product cards, to uh, social feed, activity feed. Uh, there's list views, there's tables, there's some checkout elements or comment views here. Um, you can search, you can also apply your theme to these things. So this is a powerful feature within Flutterflow that I don't think any other no code tool actually utilizes to the best of its ability. Um, and all of these components and templates and flows will adapt to your theme. If you set up your theme correctly, it's really easy. If you don't, it's a headache. So um, in the next video, I'm gonna go about how to set up your theme in correlation with 
the design standard we've set in place um, in all of these templates and flows, etc. So, and I designed them all, and we have to fit certain constraints. So I'll just go over how I set them up. Uh, I hope that helps. Okay, so that's sort of the builder. You also have the storyboard mode, um, which allows you to sort of view um, a flow, you know, from page to page. And this will adapt to your device settings, okay? So if we go back to the builder here and we say, hey, let's view this on a mobile device because within Flutterflow you can develop applications and build applications for iOS, Android, web, desktop, macOS, right? You can deploy it to tablets as well. Um, all of that from a single code base and from a single builder here. We will touch on how to do that and best practices around building responsive applications or adaptive ap applications. So if we go back here, now we get a mobile view here. So it's a little easier, a little better, or yeah, a little easier to comprehend. So as you can see, I have some conditional builders set up in some of these pages so they don't look very great here, uh, but they will. Um, when you actually deploy the application, and we'll showcase that as well. Um, okay, so storyboard. You also have a backend, right? This is for Firebase specifically. Um, there are three ba data types, um, or sorry, three databases you can use, and then there's also API calls, which allow you to connect with any REST API or any other backend that you would like to. So Firebase, Supabase, SQL Lite. Okay, SQL Lite is pretty limited as of now. Supabase is also sort of limited. There's no real time at the moment of me um, talking about this. April twenty third, twenty twenty four. Um, there can you know Flutterflow is looking to expand the capabilities of Supabase. Um, but with Firebase, you get everything out of the box. I mean, you get push notifications, cloud functions, um, authentication for Google, Apple, phone, all of these things you can set up within minutes. Um, I just did it in a live stream earlier this morning. Uh, so yeah, this is where you set up your schema for your database, and we will have instruction around how to properly connect, relate, um, reference, different collections or yeah, documents and collections. You also have data types and enums. This allows you to create things like an address, right? You can have multiple elements within an address. So a street address, name, um, apartment number, PO box, zip code, state, city, right? And you can get all of those from a place picker and then you can basically merge them into a data type where all of that stuff is referenced and split out into those individual fields. Very useful, extremely useful actually. Um, data types are awesome. We also have app state and constants. Constants are obviously like their design system related or they can be. They could be something as like as easy as spacing, they could be numbers, they could be logo sizes, um, they could be colors. I think you can have a color here, yeah. Yeah, color, right? If you wanted to set up a custom theme for your users, you could do that. Um, so you can do all of the, you, these options for constants and app state is just managing the state within your application at an app level. There's also component state and page state. We'll get into that. Uh, you have API calls, assets, right? All of your images. Um, custom code, cloud functions, testing, we won't talk much about that. Theme, whole video on this, don't worry about it. And then settings, we have a bunch of stuff here. Uh, so we have app details, right? You can set your entry page and logged in page. Also, uh, folder organization, just always turn that on. It looks way better than the old one. Um, deep linking, let's see, app assets. So this is where you can set your splash image, which is the first screen a user see when they um, come into your application. So you have that. And then uh, launcher icon, which is your app icon, and an error image. You also can turn on the, the default nav bar for mobile, and then app bars for mobile and desktop, or you can decide how you want those to be seen. So I always turn app bars off for larger tablets and desktop, 
Same thing with nav bars. I'll build my own custom nav bar. Um, we have collaboration. You can invite people and you can see activity, Firebase, languages, platforms, super, right? Linux, come on. Um, permissions, we have authentication, push notifications, which I'll be turning on for this project, and then mobile deployment, also web publishing, um, and then you have, you know, some, some other integrations here. Uh, we'll get into all of that, but this is essentially, you know, where most of the integrations live currently. It's probably going to change in the next six months, but I wanted to go through that. Um, and hopefully this is a, a general overview in about a third of the time that that other video is. So put this on 1.5. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope this helps and looking forward to seeing you or you seeing me actually um, throughout the rest of these videos.